Hey all, Brett here. Um, just wanted to take a minute and be able to uh, talk to you about um, some discipleship uh, stuff that I've been chewing on and uh, and just want to be able to to share for some encouragement and also a little bit of a, a challenge as well. Um, Jesus in Matthew 20, 28, uh, he, sorry, 28, Matthew chapter 28 was saying that he wanted us to go to make disciples, to baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and to teach them to obey everything that he has said. Um, if I'm being honest, I don't know of anyone who would really be interested in saying that they don't want Jesus to be close, right? That, for most Christians that I know of, they, they want to see Jesus, they want to see him on the move, they want to see him moving in power, they want him to come in and to revitalize neighborhoods, to change lives, to, you know, etc., etc., etc. However, if we are to teach people that they need to obey the things that, that Jesus has uh, commanded us and taught us to, to do, uh, it helps if we're doing those things ourselves. If we're not even hold, holding to holy standards, such as not being ruled by our appetites, not allowing things that that we enjoy or that we like to control us and to uh, form a dependency on those things, to be addicted by certain things, um, things that fasting breaks right, and helps to mitigate that that dependency on by realizing that our full dependence is on Christ, or by for instance, living with uh, with people who we are not married to, and and being in in open relationships, and and not having that that sanctity, that holiness of the marriage vow, um, but yet we are asking the Lord to do, to come in and to bless us and to be with us, even though you know we it's really okay if we if we say if we if we talk no different than anyone in the world does if we endorse a lot of the same behavior that the world does. Um, but, you know, we, we feel pretty positive about Jesus. That does not make us disciples. We are to go. We are to make disciples. We have to be a disciple first before we can replicate that. And that oftentimes is seen as something that's pretty radical today in, in the church world. You know, that's for those radical fanatics over there that... You know, they, they want to eat, sleep, drink, breathe Jesus, wake up with him on their mind in the morning and go to sleep thinking about him at night. And yeah, that's, that should be what we want. We want to be in his presence. We want to be where he is, love the things he loves, grieve over the things that he's grieved over, pursue and love the people who he pursues and loves. He said, go. So we don't really have to ask about, Lord, do you, do you want me to make disciples? Do, do you want me to you know, to open up my home? Do you want me to invest in, in a relationship in, with somebody, not as a project, but because you love them and because you want me to represent you to this person? The Bible already says yes, so we don't have to ask about that. More, Lord, how do you want me to do that? And I think that if we put our trust in him, even if we mess up along the way, he has grace for that. Remember that it's if we put our trust in the Lord, he makes our path straight. If we don't lean on our own understanding. If we sit around and wait until we know how to do things perfectly and we no longer need God, can we really be said to be followers of Christ and people who the Holy Spirit dwells in if nothing that we do requires him to be with us? Food for thought. Not not aiming at anybody, just asking because it's good to think about and good for the Holy Spirit to be able to start prodding on us and and uh, working on our heart. And Lord, how would you how would you want me to respond to your invitation to partner with you to expand your kingdom, and make disciples? So. Hope this is helpful. Hope it provokes some good thought and some maybe some good discussion. And I'm looking forward to talking here with you soon uh, in the chats and in, in the chat in the comment section in person. Thanks.